Hello, can you hear me? Okay, thanks. First, I would like to thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity to present this work. So it's uh, uh, with the work of SEC Web at RQC. So actually, it's uh, a talk about uh, three papers. Uh, two papers of mine. First one is about discrete wagon function and permutation symmetry. And the second one is about uh, multi qubit clever group uh, as a unit to a three design. And the second one is, uh, as you can see, has a uh, major overlap with the independent work of Zeek Web. But uh, the motivation of my study, our study, are actually very different. So my motivation originally was uh, to understand the discrete Wigner function. So also they talk about this discrete Wigner function, Clifford group, and unitary three design. But actually, it's not so much about the in individual object. It's more about the connection. So maybe, uh, so how many, how many of you know all these objects? OK, so I guess uh, most people should know Clifford group. And, uh, but for discrete Wigner function, maybe it's not uh, as familiar to the quantum information community. This is more traditional in the physics community, is very familiar. And also unitary two design is maybe more familiar to the quantum information community, but maybe not so familiar to the physics community. So previously, maybe these objects are just to live in different planets, do not have any interaction as, far as I know. But as we know, non-local correlation could uh, actually ubiquitous. And the USA later, there are actually a strong connection between these three objects. So first, I will introduce this basic concepts. Uh, this is just about the Hessenberg wave group, or also known as the poly group or general poly group. So in prime dimension, it's generated by this uh, phase operator and the cyclic shift operator. And in prime power dimension, it's basically a tensor power, tensor power of the group in prime dimension. And the elements in the group usually called displacement operator, also known as the wave operator. So the Clifford group is uh, one way to define it as a normalizer of the Heisenberg wave group. So it is this group of all unitary that map uh, poly operator to poly operator. So this group, uh, as you know, play a very important role in quantum information science, such as uh, quantum computation, quantum error correction, tomography, random mass benchmarking. So now I just give a brief introduction about the discrete Wigner function. So this was originally introduced by Wigner in 1930s to study quantum correction to thermodynamics. It is a very useful quasi-probability representation of quantum mechanics and uh, have many applications. So originally, uh, this was more study in the continuous scenario. But recently, main discrete analog of this function was introduced. So the most famous one was introduced by Wouters in 1987. And there are, later, there are many variants. But this one is most uh, interesting. Uh, so I will introduce this uh, particular discrete Wigner function. So one way to define this uh, is to use this uh, phase point operator. So first, uh, this here is a phase operator, so basic uh, this pellet operator. So basically, it uh, realizes inversion in the phase space. And the phase point operator are basically displaced the uh, phase uh, pellet operators. So this operator form orthogonal basis in the operator space. They also form a unitary error basis. So any state can be uh, expanded in terms of this uh, phase point operators. And then the coefficients are just uh, Wouters discrete Wigner function. So originally Wouters introduced this function, but uh, maybe his original definition was slightly different, but equivalent. So his goal is to uh, understand this as discrete quantum system in comparison with a continuous system. 
So what's so special about this uh, discrete wake function and this uh, phase point basis? So one thing very uh, easy to verify is that it is covalent with respect to the Clifford group. And because the Clifford group is a unitary two design, so it means that its symmetry group is a unitary two design. Also, I use this concept called supersymmetric. Uh, so it's kind of permutation symmetry that uh, can map any pair of phase operator to another pair. Uh, it, it has nothing to do with uh, usage in quantum field theory, I'm sorry. So this is actually uh, quite reminiscent of the uh, similar property in the classical phase space. Uh, coincidentally, after I completed this work on discrete wakeland function, I realized that there's a paper by my advisor like 30 years ago, that is similar symmetry on the continuous scenario. So this discrete wakeland function has very uh, many good property and has many connections like uh, in quantum computation tomography and also there's uh, uh, something called a discrete hardness theory improvement by David Cross. Uh, but uh, as I said, this is only defined in all the prime power dimension. So how about the even prime power dimension? So this is a, a long-standing open problem. Although after 30 years, uh, still no satisfactory discrete wave function has been constructed in even prime power dimension. So why? So maybe there's a fundamental abstraction, or maybe just because we're not clever enough to construct a good Wigner function. So in this talk, I will answer this question and then make a connection with the unitary design. So in this way, I will connect two different fields, discrete phase space and uh, a ubiquitous tool in quantum information science. So here's the uh, first result uh, uh, about the Clifford covalent discrete wake function. As I mentioned previously, the uh, Wouters discrete wake function is Clifford covalent. And uh, it turns out it is also uniquely defined by Clifford covalence up to some uh, this uh, the trivial shift and the scaling. And for all the prime power dimensions, this result was proved by, or only for all the prime dimensions was proved by David Gross. So I generalize this to all the prime power dimensions and also prove that no such wagon function can exist in even prime power dimension. Uh, this actually, it is not so difficult to prove this result directly, but uh, since uh, uh, the focus is about connection with unity design, so I will not prove this directly, but later I will mainly focus on this non-existence in connection with unitary design. So now I first introduce this concept of uh, unitary design, but uh, to this maybe it's instructive to also introduce projective design. <coughs> so because in many tasks in quantum information theory, we need uh, some, like random states and random high unitary. Uh, but this is not easy to sample because uh, uh, it is continuous. And uh, so we hope to find a good approximation and uh, that is also easy to sample. Uh, so this will lead to this concept of projective and unitary design. So there are many applications. Uh, so here's a technical definition of this projective design. So in some sense, it approximates the uh, uh, pure states uh, with respect to high measure. And this uh, parameter T uh, determines how good this approximation is. And uh, the unitary design is uh, defined similarly. So it's defined by this uh, two operation, and it is equivalent to uh, the tool by its whole unitary group. So the most familiar example of unit two, two design are Clifford group and the restricted Clifford group. Also, uh, there are approximate design can be constructed by these uh, random circuits. 
So for later application, I uh, need this alternative definition of a unitary design based on is called a frame potential. So it is not difficult to prove that uh, a state of unitary operator is a uh, design, T design, if and only if the frame potential attains, uh, attains a minimum. So for some special cases of interest to us, the minimum is given by this formula. So here, as a connection between uh, discrete Wigner function and this unitary design. So as I previously said, the basis of this first point of operators has the symmetry group unitary two design, and also it's super symmetric in the sense that it's the symmetry group act doubly transitively. It turns out this concept are actually equivalent. So quite maybe, so unitary two design implies this, this doubly transitive permitting symmetry. Uh, another result maybe most surprising is that uh, any super symmetric operator basis is up to some trivial scaling and the shift is equivalent to this uh, uh, Wigner-Wouters basis uh, with two exceptions. So these two exceptions are constructed from uh, two special symmetric information with complete measurements. Uh, the proof of this is more difficult than the relies on the classification of finite simple groups. So uh, I guess I won't have time to go through the proofs, but uh, so, so now I uh, come to uh, connection uh, between three design and uh, uh, this uh, non-existent of a discrete wave function in even power, power dimension. Uh, so this result, uh, so basically, uh, the multi cubic Kilova group is the unitary three design, but uh, the, the one in the order power, power dimension is only a two design, not a three design. So this was uh, proved by me and also Zach Weber independently. So my proof uh, was mainly based on represent, representation theory and also based on this uh, frame potential. So one way to prove this is you just compute the frame potential directly. So this can be done, and uh, here's the frame potential up to first order. So from, uh, then you compare this frame potential with the minimum previously mentioned, then you just obtain this result. Uh, so from this frame, frame potential, you can also say how far the Clever group is, say, all the proper dimension to three design. So for larger P, uh, it's far away from three design. For smaller P, it is more closer to three design. And when P is two, you get uh, exactly three design. So how is this related to this discrete Wigner function? So actually, this uh, non-existence of a discrete Wigner function is a direct consequence of this uh, fact that this uh, Clifford group is a unitary three design. So this fall from uh, this latest theorem. So because a discrete Wigner function is defined with respect to some particular operator basis, and it is uh, covalent if and only if this uh, operator basis is covalent with respect to this particular group. And it turns out no operator basis can be covalent with respect to any group that forms a three design. So this imply uh, no discrete Wigner function can be Covalent with respect to the multi cubic Clever group. So, this solves the problem on this discrete wave function. Uh, so, for this, in the case of if, so now in, I just uh, maybe briefly mention how to this in the uh, special case of this operator basis is rank one, that is composed of uh, rank one projectors. Uh, then it is uh, easier to verify that. Uh, uh, then this uh, operate this rank one projectors the number must uh, at least the, the dimension of the tripartite symmetric subspace, and this is larger than d square. So then this is part uh, this no operator basis can be covalent with respect to three design. So for uh, in general, it's a bit uh, slightly more complicated, but uh, also can be proved. 
Oh, okay. So I uh, here I just mentioned alternative derivation of the three design result uh, with uh, so with this approach of thick web. So his uh, uh, proof is based uh, some concept called polymixin. Uh, this was introduced previously. Uh, so this can establish a connection between two design and uh, this polymixin. But he then generalizes this concept to this poly two mixin. So basically, you. Uh, if you act as this Clifford group on the one particular poly operator, you can, you can get some uniform distribution of this poly operator or maybe pairs of poly operator. And then he proved that this property would imply the group from a, a unitary three design. And then he showed that this Clifford group, multi cubic Clifford group, has this special property called poly two mixing. Then this implies that uh, uh, the multi cubic Clifford group is a unitary three design. So, one advantage of his proof is that it does not use this group structure. So, in my proof, I use this group structure. So, uh, uh, it's not so clear how to generalize to general situation, but his proof is quite nice in this aspect. So, okay, so there are some generalization of these results. Uh, so, first one is uh, about the minimal three design. So we know Clifford group, multi-cubic Clifford group is a unitary three design. But the question is, is there any smaller one? Because in many applications, design with a small number of elements are desirable. It turns out uh, essentially the answer is no, except for dimension four. In this case, there's a unique proper subgroup of the Clifford group that is also three design. So this is related to some special maybe group structure of this. Sympathetic group. Also, this another generalization is based on the approach of thick web. So, because his approach also apply to this design from the without group structure, so you can get a stronger result that in odd point point I mentioned, any ensemble of clever unit that is you, you can add some weight and you arbitrary weight you can choose, but uh, it turns out uh, even. With this freedom, you cannot construct a unitary three design in order to point dimension. And in the case of even point point dimension, you can also you cannot get full design with arbitrary uh, weight weight. Uh, so here's another simple corollary of uh, our result is that uh, multi qubit stabilizer states from a projective uh, three design. Uh, because any orbit of uh, Unitary T design is a projective T design. This is very easy to uh, prove. So from this, uh, we get this uh, result as a corollary. But all this was a direct proof directed by uh, Richard Kerr and uh, David Gross. But uh, their proof is uh, much more complicated, I think. OK, so here's a summary of my, our main results. So the first one is about the Clifford covariant discrete weakened function, and it's unique in all the prompt power dimension. Uh, it cannot exist in even prompt power dimension. And it turns out uh, uh, this uh, result is closely related to this permutation symmetry and the unitary two design. And then uh, we should say the multi qubit Clifford group is a unitary uh, three design. So here's a prop figure about this object. Uh, we consider this uh, Clifford group uh, discrete weakness function, unitary design, and this supersymmetry operator basis. Uh, because to understand this connection with this object, it's uh, easy if you introduce additional object called this, this first symmetric operator basis. So to me, it's the most important message is we establish connection among this object that uh, maybe far away to you. So this connection, we hope, will maybe uh, make pro uh, to lead to further progress in both fields. OK, so here are some open problems. So first one is, what can we expect on discrete regular function in even power power dimension? So as, I sh as we assure that uh, in even power dimension, we do not have 
a good discrete vector function with the similar good property is in, in all the proper dimension case. Then maybe you can say drop some property and uh, so what can you expect as good as possible? Uh, well, another question is uh, about three design, when it is useful. So in many applications, uh, we know that, uh, for example, two design are not sufficient and the four design are sufficient. In, but the three design as a situation is not clear. So the problem is uh, when it is uh, useful. For example, in uh, some problem related to state dis discrimination, and also in, in this comparison sensing and the random master benchmarking. So I believe we can at least improve some uh, known results based on the fact that it is a three design. But uh, the problem is how can we improve this? Uh, another problem is uh, how to sample uh, uh, Clifford unit tray efficiently. I think previously people have more focus on this restricted Clifford group and there's the efficient sampling algorithm. But for the whole Clifford group, uh, I'm still not sure. Uh, another question is how to construct unit tray T design with high T. Because in many applications, uh, T design with larger T are necessary. Okay, so the last technical question is, uh, is CFSG that says classification of a simple group, is this indispensable in the proof? Because part of my proof relies on this CFSG. Uh, as far as I know, I didn't know any previous application of CFS, CFSG on physics. Uh, if you know any application, I would be uh, very inter interested to know. And I, also, I would like to know whether, at least uh, in some uh, part of application, we can remove this uh, dependence. Then would it be, I mean, easier to understand. Okay, so that's the mes uh, main message. Uh, okay, I should uh, maybe. Uh, thank uh, Zach Webb. Uh, he uh, made uh, many good suggestions to make this uh, slides and presentation uh, more accessible. Okay, thanks. So, questions? So, can you say anything about non prime dimensions? Non prime dimension. Uh, in this case, uh, my belief is that uh, except for some symbolic examples that, that do not exist unity, group unit to design. Okay, thanks. More questions? So, if not, let's thank uh, the speaker again.